course, you might be sent to a re-education camp, <laughs> you know, to, to help you get your mind right. 888-589-8840. Back in a moment on First Amendment Friday. It's my turn. Here is your host for my turn, Don Wildman. Death. That's a morbid subject, isn't it? It's certainly a subject that's usually discussed in a hush-hush tone. And for many, just to mention the possibility of it sends cold chills down their spine. But whether we want to talk about it or not, one thing is for certain. We all are going to have to face it. One reason we hesitate to discuss death in a proper fashion is the fact that we fear death because it's unknown to us, because we've never experienced it, because we do not know what it's like. We are afraid of it. Fear, you see, is so often caused by ignorance. When we don't have some knowledge about something, then we have a tendency to be afraid of it. That's why some of us are glad that the carpenter came our way. He gave us some knowledge on the subject. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not knocking the way we speak of death or trying to belittle our efforts to pay respect. What I'm saying is that too often we fail to take a realistic look at death. We treat it as though it's a horrible thing, a monster, a dreaded experience. I wonder if the reason we treat it like that is because this is the way death appears to be to most of us. Maybe we've never stopped to think that the same creator who gave us this beautiful thing that we call life is the same one who also made death a part of the plan. How is it that we can on one hand call one of his gifts a beautiful thing and in the very next breath say his other gift is awful? Does his nature change like that? We feel that he is indeed the same yesterday, today, forever. The problem is that we take his gifts without taking him. You see, we use life, live it to the fullest, without ever stopping to think where it comes from or who is responsible for it. Then one day, sometimes suddenly, we're face to face with the other gift of his, often unprepared for it, and we curse it. We have known, since we were old enough to understand, that everyone must die. But we put off thinking about it, getting prepared for it, and it catches us unable to cope with it. Followers of the man of Galilee have a healthy attitude toward death, for they belong to the Creator. How was it that that little Jewish tent maker said it? Whether we live or die then, we belong to the Lord. <laughs> you know, it was faith like that that led him to say, As for me, the hour has come for me to be sacrificed. The time is here for me to leave this life. I have done my best in the race. I have run the full distance. I have kept the faith. And now the prize of victory is waiting for me. You know, I'd rather face it that way than cursing it. But then one cannot face it in that manner unless he's able to say those very same words. I guess that's the thing that scares us so. This has been My Turn with Don Wildman, a production of the American Family Association. The Awakening. The Awakening. Download and listen at your leisure with the podcast page at AFR.net. Now, back to our host, Bishop E.W. Jackson. By the way, folks, I didn't get a chance to do much but allude to this, but let me come back to it quickly again. You know, this these regulators are now coming up with a new mortgage rate structure get this now get this in which if you have a high credit score 740 or higher you will be charged a one percent fine or quote unquote surcharge on the amount of your mortgage in other words you will be punished for having a high credit score and you will be required to put 15 to 20 percent down on the mortgage on the other hand, if you have a low credit score, 679 or lower, you will be given a discount, a rate discount of 1.75%, and you will only have to put 5% down. You all see what they're doing? 
It tried to prevent people who've done the right thing, tried to be responsible. It tried to prevent them from buying houses and tried to make it possible for people who have a lower credit score, have not paid their bills, who've had financial problems. They're giving them the ability to buy those houses cheap, more cheaply, lower interest rates, and they're going to surcharge the people with high rate of scores, lower interest rates, lower down payment, surcharge the people with high rate of scores, high, high credit scores, higher interest rates, higher down payment. Folks, this is the kind of behavior that led to what was near a cataclysmic financial collapse of our country in 2008, and they're doing it all over again. And as I said before, it's because they don't care about our country. They don't care about America. They don't care about us, the, we the people. They care about advancing their own thirst, their, their psychotic thirst for power. And in order to keep people at the trough, to keep people selling themselves out, they're just going to give away the country if they have to. And by the way, give it, give it away to illegal immigrants, give it away to, to ne'er-do-wells, give it away to criminals, give it away to illegal immigrants, give it away to anybody who they think will help them stay in power. I keep coming back to that quote from John Milton's Paradise Lost because it, re it always reminds me of, of the Democrats and the left and their attitude about this country. And, and John Milton, this is not in the Bible, of course, but he quoted Satan as saying, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. In other words, he'd rather reign in chaos and evil and wickedness than have to serve in God's peace and joy and love. And that's that to me is exactly where the left is trying to take the country. They'd rather the country be a hellish nation. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. They'd rather us be a hellish nation over which they have power and be a great nation, a wonderful nation, a godly nation where they don't have power. 888-589-8840 is the number. Let's come back to your calls. Let's go to Don in Virginia. Don, welcome. Thank you, sir. If I'm a high school teacher and a, and a, uh, a man, a, a boy comes into my classroom and they require me to refer to him as a she, because he chooses to be female. If that young person should become involved in a school incident and require me to go to court as a witness and put my hand on the Bible and swear to God to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Do I have to refer to him as she? I'm still uh, stirring the pot. <laughs> Don, thank you for the call, Don. And the question, I think the answer is yes. You'll 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 have to lie before God in order to keep your job. I think that's the system that they set up right now. You have to lie before God in order to keep your job, whether it's on on the the witness stand under oath or not. That's what they're asking you to do: lie before God to keep your job. Thank you for the call, Don. Uh, let's go to William in Illinois. William, welcome. Good afternoon, brother. I think Good. the big lie I see today is so much of this is this their crowd pleasing, thinking that there's safety in numbers. Why does anybody living in circles saying it's like they got to grow a crowd? When I live like hell, I just want nobody to follow me in that path. But there's no safety in numbers. If there's a million people out in the desert that don't have any water, it's not going to make me feel better if I don't have any. Thank you, brother. Thank you, William. You know, it's interesting. Remember that, that, that story I shared with you all about the psychiatric association, psychiatric, pediatric association and how they want, they're wanting now to follow critical race theory principles. You know, you know, the thing that they mentioned, they actually mentioned this in a 22 page paper that we must think as collectivists, not as individuals, as collectivists. And that's exactly the point you're getting at. They think that there's some kind of safety in numbers and that you can be as wrong as you want to be as long as you got enough people with you. And I think that's what the left 
means when they refer to our democracy, our democracy, what they mean is if we can hoodwink enough people to go along with us, we can do whatever we want to do no matter how wicked it is. Thank you for the call, my friend. Let's go to uh, Mike. Mike in West Virginia. Mike, welcome. Thank you for taking my call. Um, earlier in the week, you uh, spoke about uh, Demo- uh, Christians voting for Democrats. Well, my parents were both Democrats, and I am not. And I think there are too many people in this country who really believe that anyone who calls himself a Democrat can do no wrong, and anyone who calls himself a Republican can do no right. Yeah, Mike, that's that's you're right. That's that is cult like thinking. And by the way, and thank you for the call, Mike. The reason I I say no Christian can vote for a Democrat is not that every Democrat must be inherently corrupt, because we I don't know every individual who's a member of the Democrat Party, and I think a lot of rank and file people are just Democrats because that's what they've always been. They haven't really thought about it. But the party's platform, the party's principles, what they represent is evil. I mean, right now, Biden is saying any attempt to stop uh, the government, any attempt to stop transgender confused men from playing on women's sports teams, any attempt to, to federalize that, to say that that is a violation of the woman's constitutional rights, he will veto that's where the Democrat Party is now. That's where the left is. I say everything that's for God, they're against. Everything that's against God, they're for. Thank you for the call, Mike. Let's go to Ann in North Carolina. Ann, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. Like everybody says that, but it, but it, it means a lot to each and every one of us. Thank you. Um, I just... Thank you. I just ran into a lady at an auto shop getting a parts piece, and um, she was talking about she was talking about how complicated it was. There's so many facets, so much going on, and what is going on with the world. And I said, well, you know, it's not like we haven't had warning. And she looked at me, and I said, well, look at like uh, I read 1938 Communist Manifesto. When I was nine or ten, I saw Khrushchev bang his shoe all of those things and i mean we've been warned of all this but we didn't want to hear and we maybe couldn't hear and then you go in churches and the preachers don't talk about it but i said the bible is all over the bible i said it's not like we haven't been warned but we've we've got to find a simple way and i'm working hard on that a simple way to get people who are articulate like you and cameron mcgill over at white lake church that those kinds of people you know uh our attorney general north or not attorney general lieutenant governor mark uh, Mark robinson look at him he's just blazing away for a lot of things but he's doing it in a simple way it's so complicated people can't keep up with it and thank you so much for the call Uh, and you're right you're right we need to we need to boil this down that's why i think once again the thread that runs through all of this is rebellion against God, that America must come back to God. But we've lost our common sense because we've lost godly wisdom. So that's what we've got to reclaim. And I mean, that's that's fairly simple and fairly straightforward. And even this these younger generations know that that's where they've come from. That's where their parents and grandparents come from. And there are people who want to separate them from all of that. We'll be back in a moment to take more of your calls. Hi, I'm Kirby Anderson, president of Probe Ministries and host of the Point of View radio program. You've probably noticed that many young Christians leave the church after they graduate, but they don't have to graduate from God. That's why I want to invite your children and grandchildren to attend the Probe Mind Games Camp in Texas. We prepare them for college and their entry into a world that will challenge their faith. This one-week camp includes lectures, role play, along with some great fun. It will take place June 18th to the 24th. Go to probe.org for more information. 
I am Dr. Jessica Peck, host of the Dr. Nurse Mama Show beginning April 24th on AFR.net. I'll serve as your expert guide to engage, equip, encourage, and empower you to navigate life's toughest issues with your teens. The podcast begins April 24th on AFR.net, and I can hardly wait. See you there. Here's Alice Craft of Reach a Village Ministries. Children under the age of 15 make up about one quarter of the world's population. That represents two billion children. More than half of the children we encounter at Reach a Village Ministries live in rural farming villages. Their life is difficult, and the chances of them hearing the gospel are almost zero. Christian workers trained and equipped to reach these villages can take the good news of Jesus right into their homes. If you give today, a generous donor is willing to match your gift dollar for dollar. That means that you can help reach twice as many children in these difficult to reach places. Go to reachavillage.org slash AFR or call 833-773-2247 or 8337-REACH-7. As I looked back at Mark and you know, the whole passage, I realized that Jesus stood up and said, be still. Sally Clarkson on Focus on the Family Minute. But then he didn't look at his disciples and say, oh, I'm so sorry I took a nap, but please forgive me. But he said, where is your faith? And when I look at being a parent of adult children now and when I look at my own life I realize that that was kind of I think a testing ground mm. for what would happen in their future they were all going to die violent deaths um, for the sake of Christ and I think that they could probably all look back on that time as they got older and say um, Jesus companioned us through that storm Jesus is going to companion me through all the storms of my life you can hear more insights from Sally Clarkson today at FamilyMinute.org. Back to the Awakening with Bishop E.W. Jackson on American Family Radio. You know, the other thing we haven't talked about is the debt ceiling. And uh, Kevin McCarthy, I think, has put forth a very reasonable bill, raising the, the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion. Uh, because let's face it, uh, any attempt to, to to not raise the debt ceiling is going to lead to Joe Biden. Uh, let's put it this way. He will bash Republicans over the head and, and, and claim that we are responsible for whatever economic cataclysm he can engineer. And that's exactly what they will do, because, again, they don't care what happens to the American people. But he's put forth a reasonable bill, one point five trillion dollar increase in the debt ceiling with coupled with a reduction in spending in the upcoming budget and a 1% limit on increases in spending, I think it's over the next 10 years. And these are fairly modest proposals to try to slow down the spending. They're not even trying to, 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 to really significantly cut spending, just trying to slow down the increase in spending. And of course, they're acting like it's the end of the world. Because these people have no clue that you can't simply spend and spend and spend and spend and borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow without at some point creating a cataclysmic economic consequence. They just, they live in fantasy land. 888-589-8840. Lily in Kansas, you've been waiting very patiently. Lily, thank you for your patience. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Bishop. You know, um, I've been hearing many minorities um, saying that they want somebody who looks like me, quote unquote, to occupy such and such position. And, you know, look at uh, Justice Clarence Thomas. I've seen many people who look like him calling for his removal from the bench. So next time somebody says that, you know, I want somebody who looks like me to be appointed here, we need to correct them and say, do you mean somebody who thinks like you? Because that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. It's got nothing to do with look like, it's think like. Thank you. 
Thank you for the call, Lily. Uh, you, you nailed it. Brilliant point. Um, and by the way, what they really mean is I want somebody who thinks like me and looks like me. And here again, to me, that's a nonsense statement. It really is. Because, I mean, you know, it's just it's just nonsense. Let me, let me not stop and expound on that. Let me get more of your calls in. Let's go to Sherry in Alabama. Sherry, welcome. Hi. Thank you for Hi, having Sherry. me on. Good day. 